Hey everyone, welcome to Trust Engineering. I'm Ahmed and I'm here again to teach you CAD. Well, essentially how to do the sketch on KDW5. Um, this is the second video in our series of uh, 2D sketches and I'm here with another engineering drawing that I will be teaching you how to make. So without any further delays, I'm really going to hop into my computer and I'm going to show you how to make this weird looking stuff. So before we move on, I would highly appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. That's going to help me. That's going to help support this channel and leave a like. And if you want to ask me anything, just drop it in the comment section or you can DM me in on my Instagram at Chazgaba. So with that said, we're going to hop into the computer and I'm going to start some sketching. So like always, we're gonna start with the mechanical design and then car design. And you can name anything you want. Or, well, in my case, I'm gonna name it car. Like I always do. And I'm gonna choose the position frame one. So this is the frame one. I'm gonna choose the X, Y frame. And I'm gonna click here to start sketch. Okay, that's gonna enter So as I said in my previous video, I told you that when I'm designing anything, I usually look for um, symmetries uh, that are present in the uh, engineering drawing. And in this case, if you notice here that if you split this um, drawing in half in this axis, you will see that these both sides are symmetrical about this axis. So I can use, so I can make use of this property and I'm gonna, well, basically use this property here uh, while drawing this um, sketch. So what that, what that, how, how's that gonna help me? So essentially I'm only gonna be drawing half of it and I'm gonna replicate the other half on the side using the symmetry property because it's gonna help me at tons of time to, you know, uh, help me save tons of time uh, a lot of time uh, in you know in not doing this side because obviously i have to be more efficient when i'm an engineer i have to make use of symmetries and other properties that can help me reduce time so that said uh, we're gonna go into the right so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a uh, create an axis around which we're gonna use the symmetry property and the axis is gonna be in this direction the vertical center vertical so this here is the axis that I can use to draw. So this is our axis. And now I'm gonna start sketching the actual drawing. So if you notice here, um, this, this uh, drawing, it is mostly, a, mostly uh, composed of different arcs. So if you see here, there's one arc here there's one arc here and one arc here. So there's three different arcs here. But I, what do I mean by arc? It means that a part of a circle. So we got this part of circle, this part of circle, and this part of circle. So I can use any arc tool or a circle tool to make different parts and then join them together. So I'm gonna start off with the biggest arc here. And from there, we can, we're gonna move on further. So I'm gonna use the circle tool and I'm gonna make a, an actual circle, not just an arc. Just make things easier for us. And I'm gonna constrain it. And if you see here, its radius is 17.5, so I'm gonna double click on it. And I'm gonna change this to radius, and I'm gonna change it to 17. Point. And now the distance between the center and to the to the axis of symmetry. So I'm gonna use, use constraint again. I'm gonna select these two, the distance between them, and I'm gonna make it 25, which it says here. 25 units can be anything. So now for the second arc, this one. If you see here, these arcs are transitioned smoothly next to each other, which means that this part of the circle and this part of the circle have a tainted property between them. So I'm gonna use Again, I'm going to make a complete circle and we can trim off the rest of the parts of the circle later on. So if you see here, 
see you're gonna see a blue line here yeah and it means that these two are tangent to each other the properties that we need right now so we can just click on it again and it's gonna create a circle for us if you see here this these two green parallel lines means that this circle and this circle are tangent to each other at one point which is this one okay so the the radius of this arc is 15 so i'm gonna make it 15 it's almost 15 here 15 and press enter and yep so we got two arcs here and we got one more arc here which is 25 units in radius so i'm gonna make another circle don't worry about making circles i'm gonna show you how we can uh, trim it so again we have a tangential property here which we need because obviously they are transitioning smoothly into one another another which means that there's a tangential property here now for the radius of this arc it's radius 25 and then i change that to 25 units here and there we have it now what else do we need now if you notice here our drawing looks nothing like what we have here but trust me we are gonna go there so if do we need anything else here no we don't so now we're gonna start trimming the parts of the circle that we don't need so i'm gonna double click on the quick trim and i'm gonna start taking out parts that we don't need here so we got this part here and now we need this part so we, we're gonna get rid of this one this arc so now we got this one and we need this part of the arc we don't need this one so i'm gonna click on there's the other side and now we have it so now it's starting to look more like the 2d drawing that we have on our disposal okay so i'm gonna deselect it make it more cleaner here now what do we need so if you see here we got automatically constrained this side it means that this so this is the coincident constraint here if you, you can see here and we don't need this because obviously this point and it's not coincident on the central axis so i'm gonna click it select this and press delete it's going to delete the constraints and we can take it out a bit further because of This whole length is 20 units, but obviously we're splitting in half, so it's going to be 10. And what do we need? So we got, we got this length, 50. So from the bottom of the, so from this side to the center of the circle, it is 30, but obviously we have to make it curve first. So now we just select all the lines. Units. Note the check diameter and make it 20 units. Okay, now we got it. So one more thing we can do is we can make both of these circle arcs themselves arc and circle um, concentric. Which means that essentially they have a similar same center. So we got concentricity set and rotativity. You see this one? It means that both of these are concentric now. Now we're gonna label the one dimension with this one. So at the from the bottom of this circle to the side. So I'm gonna check the constraint again. Click on this first and then click on the circle and it's gonna create a dimension. So this dimension is 32. I'm gonna make it 32. is fully constrained so which means that it doesn't move okay, okay we're <coughs> sorry uh we're missing this radius i'm gonna 
So I'm gonna try to move it here. Yeah, so it's really visible now. So yeah, so now our design is fully constrained and ready to go. So we got half of this ready. I'm gonna make this half after we've um sorry that was just my chicken. We got chicken at our home roosters. Um okay, yeah, sorry my cock won't shut up. That's okay, anyway. Um so yeah, now I'm going to try to uh, use a symmetry property and mirror the, uh, this half over there. So for that, we're going to use our good old mirror tool that we used in my previous video as well. So I'm going to make it somewhere here. Yeah, so I'm going to select all of it and I'm going to use the mirror. I'm really sorry, my booster won't shut up. Okay, so we're going to use the mirror property. And I'm going to choose the line or axis from which the elements will remain equidistant, which means that essentially means this axis of symmetry, which is the one that we created in the, uh, at the start. So I'm going to select that and voila, it creates a symmetric uh, this, uh, sketch on the other side as well. It looks so wrong, but we're not getting, not getting to that debate. Now, What's left now here is this weird looking triangle, rectangle, sorry. So I'm going to make that here. I'm going to make a rectangle here first. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to symmetrify both of these sides along this axis. So obviously we need symmetry here. So I'm going to select both of these sides first. And then I'm going to select this axis here, uh, the axis of symmetry. And then I'm going to select the symmetry axis symmetry uh, constraint so it's symmetric like that now so the distance between this edge and this side is 10 i'm gonna constrain that as well and there, there is So that's how you can use um, curves and circles and basically arcs to make something that resembles something like this. At least that's what it looks like this. And you can use uh, make use of that invisible property to you know to blend in different curves with each other and create a nice looking uh, shape here. So yeah, if you have any questions, just leave me a comment in the comment section, and you can DM me on my Instagram as well at just about. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be dropping in, uh, dropping more content pretty much every day. And yeah, just give me a feedback if you think I should uh, put something more uh, on my YouTube channel because obviously every kind of feedback is um, accepted here. If you like what I'm doing, just drop me a comment. And if you don't like what I'm doing, you can drop me a comment as well. So yeah, I'm going to see you in the next video on 2D sketches. So till that, I'll see you later. Adios.